Good evening, welcome to the Prestige Jewelry Club. My name is Steve. Today, we're taking a look at um, a bizarre style loose gem show. This is what we have to offer from our vault that we are bringing to you to customize to perfection for just you. This is just, this is, a, this is designed to be exclusively something that you can enjoy for yourself or, or uh, start a collection of gems. People are very, very much like to collect gems or expand the collection you already have. We're gonna be bringing you up to 75% savings on colorful loose gem Stones coming up tonight on the Prestige Jewelry Club. Good evening, welcome to the Prestige Jewelry Club. My name is Steve, I'm here with the wonderful Arid Kaf Kafi, and we are going to be taking a look for the next 60 minutes, oh pardon me, for the next two hours, we have a luxurious show where we're gonna be taking a look at the beautiful, colorful gemstones. Now, we are gonna be taking you across the world. So, back to the lovely Arid, and thank you again very thank much you. for joining us tonight. So, tell me, I mean, what is it about loose gemstones that are really so unique and have really made them such a popular thing within the last, you know, half decade? Well, loose stones were always a collector's interest. Uh, we go back to, uh, to J.P. Morgan and he, uh, uh, we call the Morganite, which we don't have in today's array of stones, but uh, he was a collector and uh, we've had collectors for a very long time and the only way they could collect was loose stones. Uh, but uh, I find that loose stones is our opportunity to play with the most incredible with a wonderful uh, uh, Colombian emerald. The both are very pale, they have this incredible uh, tone that is, is so in fashion right now. This gets me excited. Absolutely. I mean, we have everything tonight from Ethiopian opals to we go all the way from to Brazil. We have some beautiful citrines, totally different style stone, different type of aesthetic, different look, different plays of color and different price ranges and sizes between all of them. And this is really a unique opportunity, I think, for us to show not only the stones and the beauty and the clarity and the value you can get from us by offering them to you, but the unique ability to see how different they are and where they come from in the world, which to me, I just find to be fascinating. So right. I want to start off, let's go down to the Pacific Islands. You mentioned it being beautiful weather and it is beautiful weather here in uh, Manhattan's Diamond District. Um, but let's take a look at what we're going to, uh, what are yellow diamonds. Now, correct me, Irit, these are from, now these yellow diamonds we have this evening are from Australia. So they're from the Pacific Islands. Um, and so if, if you look at yellow diamonds used to be, um, they, they were, or they were said to be less valuable and less sought after than white diamonds, correct? Well, my... that depends. When the GIA, which is the Gemological Institute of America, uh, had actually graded the degree of yellowness within a stone to the point that we can now tell between, oh, the, the stone is G1255, yes, 1255. So, yeah, G1255. I'm going to put it up here for you, Arit, and uh, if you would just point us out. I white. think against the white, it's a beautiful, you can, you can actually see the color. And so when the GIA had taken a lot of different yellow uh, stones and have graded them by color to define what is uh, faint, to what is intense and vivid. Uh, it allowed us for the very first time to have a scale of yellowness. And when you have a scale, you can actually measure it and you can price it. Because up until then, you could call it all kind of different names. Many people called it canary, for example, but canary had a lot of different shades. So once the GIA had created that scale of uh, colors, 
we were able to price it uniformly across the board mm. and people were able to trade it in a way that was not available to them before. Now, now Yellow Diamond is brand new to me. Like, I, I'm new to the color gym world, um, and this is this is a brand new stone for me. And this one, as you were taking a look at here, I believe it was a marquee cut. Now, this is different than many other types. Like, was I, you know, I always love to refer to like the circular cut as like the Audrey Hepburn, the kind of classic, the 1950s style. This is a 0.71 carat, four by eight millimeter marquee, fancy intense yellow diamond. And you can see right there, all the sparkle and play, it is really, it looks like what you've come to expect out of a white diamond. Um, but it has got all this beautiful, intense, and like, I wouldn't call it pale. It's kind of almost a pastel, beautiful yellow color. It is, and uh, when we were talking about possibilities of combining stones and creating a beautiful pendant or mm. a necklace that would have, I would see the marquee as a connector, as the one that will go in between two stones. That's a great point. Now, what would you maybe, now, just, just as a little information for our audience out there, Reed has also uh, had her hands and a lot of pie, her fingers and a lot of pies over uh, over her illustrious career. Thank and you. Uh, design is one of the things that you've definitely been involved in. That's correct. I ran the product development areas and uh, and the design areas in, in more than one company. So uh, so let's take a little look into the Arete head. So if you have this beautiful marquee yellow diamond, which is, uh, again, we're offering uh, this evening at a huge discount, or not, pardon me, not discount. Discount would imply that we don't do it always. But if you look at our graphics right there, you can see the estimated retail value is $7,839. That's what you pay for this beautiful marquee cut if you went into any brick and mortar store. Um, the, club price there that you see is what we normally offer it for. Seven days a week, that's what we would give you this beautiful piece for. But tonight only we have our rock star price, $1,752. That's, we've chosen, we're bringing it, uh, we're bringing it down even farther off of the estimated retail value just for this evening only. Now, let's take a little look into your design head. Now, if you were saying like a marquee cut, you say would be a great, you know, a link between two pieces. Uh, what what would be a good match to go with that, do you say? Well, if I let my imagination go completely wild, and uh, we were talking about the possibility of kunzite, uh, or even, uh, let's do something different. Let's okay. take, uh, let me see, there was a stone that I saw. That this is what's so fun about having all these global <laughs> stones. It just, just sparks the imagination right away. Well, and the great yes. thing about these, uh, at the prices we are going to offer them, Marit, is that these are going to be, a f like you're going to be able to bring in, uh, or you'd be able to get two of these, maybe even three, depending on the stones, uh, for the price of what you'd normally pay for just the one individual one. Now, I think what you've pulled out here is a Colombian pear-shaped emerald. Am I correct? It is, and uh, I mentioned that uh, we have two pastel stones, for example, a kunzite and, uh, and um, a Colombian emerald. Now, I love what you And and when I add, and I, unfortunately we won't be able to bring the setting I way well, hold up. Hold on just one second, read. I want to make sure that, uh, that Here, I can... I'll I can... put it this way so it okay, will be great. easy for anybody to see it. Here we go. Let me show it. It would hang actually the opposite on, on your neck. Okay. It would hang with the uh, pear shape pointing up. Okay. Oh, I got you. So the pear... Uh, no, the pear shape would be uh, pointing down. Uh-huh. Let me do it this way, okay? The pear, pear shape would be pointing there we are. up, the marquee in between them, mm -hmm. and then you would have a kunzai. Mm. What does it create? A huge presence. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm going to uh, a special event. All I want is maybe uh, an open decollete, open shirt that is, is white or any kind of pastel color. And then I wear this on a very fine necklace, on a very fine chain. Mm -hmm. You've got the evening made. That's all you need. You don't need any heavy design. The stones themselves are the design. And you can see that, I mean, this is a beautiful kunzite. Now we're gonna talk about kunzite and uh, and also our uh, our Colombian emeralds just a little bit later. But this is, you've, you've brought up two great examples of these pieces. Um, and the kunzite here, um, if, we were gonna, if you're calling up and you're interested in this particular one, is a G, 
1148. That's G1148 for the Kunzite here. Um, and the Emerald is, the, is 1172. Yeah, and the Emerald is 1172. But let's talk about just briefly looking at this Kunzite, uh, just so we can kind of give it an overview. Just because if someone saw this and wanted to buy it, I want to make sure they know exactly where to go. And you can see all the color clarity. Let's not give all the information away about it yet, because we're going to take a whole look at Kunzite later. But now you've gotten a little preview of it. And now check it. Look at this beautiful pear shaped emerald that we have. Now, this is a really interesting specimen because I think that emeralds are different than what you'd expect expect to see um, with the, like as far as clarity normally I, I would think that the more clear a gem is um, is like typically the, the thing you're absolutely looking for and that's true and still in the case of emeralds but by the fact of it being cloudy is not necessarily a bad thing correct from what it I'm is not particularly in emerald because uh, it denotes that it's an emerald to start with uh, it is known for its jardin <laughs> which is uh, the French word a fancy French word for garden and so the French were wise enough to realize that the inclusions are inevitable. That is what it takes to get a wonderful uh, emerald. And when you get a wonderful emerald, it does have a garden in it. And the garden is filled with uh, minerals that were neighboring to that particular crystal, or maybe water that was trapped, or perhaps some gas that was trapped, which creates another miracle that is called a three-phase inclusion where, you know, you really get excited because you can tell where it came from. Oh, Eureka, so. <laughs> you've got so much to say about emeralds. I'm so, um, and if we get, our, if we can just take a look over here on our beautiful tray number nine, this is coming up later. These are from uh, from, our, from our Colombian emeralds. So whenever we get to South America, a little bit later even, you can see right over here in nine, look at all the array of emeralds we can offer uh, to this evening alone. We have everything from cushion cuts to looks like octagon cuts, a couple of pear cuts. We even have a pair, a couple of uh, pear shaped cuts in here that might be good for for earrings but I don't want to get too caught up in that yet because we're still back in the beautiful islands of the outback of Australia so Eric let's who we have well, I want to show just a couple of more quick cuts of our yellow diamond and then I want to take a look into a different region how does sure, that sound to you sure it sounds great so you know we, most of yellow diamonds come from the Argyle mines in mm. in, in northwest of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, Australia so it's actually called the Kimber Kimberley area and I think one of the reasons they called it Kimberley is because diamonds are found in kimberlite in South uh, Africa. So uh, the Australian named that same area as, um, as kimberlite. So is this, these are from, uh, um, pardon me, it was from Kimberlite, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just brought out another yellow diamond, another yellow diamond. Uh, for you to get a look at. And this mm -hmm. um, is going to be a, a little a beautiful specimen, number 12, G1251, if you're calling up. Now, remember, I mentioned earlier that I like the kind of classic, more circular cuts because I like, all, I like all the flashes of light that you can see from them. I like the classic look. Now, this is an oval cut, uh, 0.48 carats, 4x5 by, by 3.5 millimeters. Again, intense yellow diamond. Now, I do have to say, I've become a huge fan of yellow diamonds. As I mentioned, it was new to me and it was very special to me. I love the color and the shine, the, the shine and the presence of them. I think that there's something unique to them. This, this would be a fantastic option if you were looking to get engaged or something. I think this would be a great option because it's not going to break the bank. It's going to be still in the diamond so you can have this kind of a classic old world feel um, so you can be traditional you know but also at the same time it's still you so color. beautiful yeah and it's it's got a lot of color and it's you know this would be a great for a petite person because look at this if I show you the table here it's just right absolutely a very little it's a sweet slick that's a, to steal the words from uh, Annie V and uh, and Ashley the other night they, it's a sweet little gem it's a sweet little gem. It, did it ever occur to you why it's yellow? No, actually, I've heard. Is it the nitrogen? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. See, I knew I, you learned something here at the Prestige Jewelry Club once in a while. Every time we hang out with a reed, I feel like I learned something new. Nitrogen. Right. So explain nitrogen to me in the well, yellow diamonds. Well, I'm going to bring actually, us another one out here to look at while you Diamonds are all carbon. It's, it's uh, pure carbon, and uh, it's the carbon uh, atom. Uh, there is only one little exception. When another trace mineral of another, another trace element comes into play and replaces some of the atoms, in this case it's nitrogen, we'll get a yellowstone. If it's got uh, another trace element like magnesium, you may have a pinkish uh, diamond. Mm. Uh, if you have barium, you will have a blue diamond. So all you need to replace is a few atoms on the level of, of an atom and you will have a different color in the diamond. 
That, I mean, that is, it's amazing the chemistry because also this is just, I, I believe most people have the impression that gems are somehow precious or chemical or, uh, you know, not, not quite natural. But this is, this is a purely 100% natural stone, not natural. enhanced at all. That it means it is just, this is the way it comes out of the ground. We've just cut and we've polished it. Now this one particularly is G1257. I brought it out specifically since I was mentioning, you know, engagements and love. This would be something maybe nice. If you are a very good son like I am, um, you might get your mother something like this. It's a beautiful little heart-shaped yellow intense diamond. Now, just because it's a yellow diamond, it's not any less hard than white diamond, correct? It's the same mineral, same chemical process. Same same mineral. So the same gem. If if one of your children got you a heart-shaped yellow diamond, would that be good for you for Mother's Day? <laughs> that would be delightful. <laughs> I hope. I hope. You see, now now you know exactly what to get or eat. We've already found it right here. Heart-shaped yellow diamond. Uh, right here from the Prestige Jewelry Club, and it's it, can't wait. It's a, <laughs> I can't wait either. And she can, and just like all of you out there, I'm sure whenever you get yours, you'll tweet a photo to us at PPJCTV, Absolutely. so we can see it in yes. use. So you can see right there just a little bit of the rounded, beautiful heart-shaped diamond. What do you say we move to a different region, Arit? I think it is. Uh, advisable and good. Uh, where would you like to go next? That's a very good question. You know, I'm thinking let's get off of Australia. Let's move over to Africa. I know you're very, very you big on African gems. You need a boat? <laughs> you need a boat. Not in this case. I you read, I could just jump from one side of the tray to the other. Right over here down here on tray number three, let's take a look at some Ethiopian <laughs> opals. What do you say? Let's take a, actually, I want to. These are specitite. Oh my, no, that's a, this is specitite? This is an opal, I believe, that I oh. found over here. Sorry, you can't quite see it over here, but I believe this is an Ethiopian opal here. Um, that it's it's not quite. Now we have another Ethiopian opal that I'm going to bring out after we look at a couple of these. But yeah, you can see it. This is G1367. So if you're calling up now, opals, in case you don't know, are extremely popular. Are a very very hot item. They're very um, very fashionable right now, and people really like cannot wait to have them. They're big at fashion accessories. This well, one designers are using it in the club. Clothing. Absolutely. That's, that's how uh, popular it is. Well, then this is in, oh, in the actual clothing? In the actual as buttons. Like as buttons? Yes. This would be a fantastic. Now, how would you attach something like this? So if you can see here, this has got the typical kind of a, now what do you call this cut for an oval? This is a cabochon, oval cabochon. Okay, oval cabochon. So, and you can see that it's got the uh, the typical rounded side, and that is it's got all the play of light. There it is. Look at that. You can see a little bit of a little bit of red yeah. in there. A lot of green. I'm seeing a whole lot Some of green. Some blue and a lot of blue. But that's what makes opal so popular, isn't it? Just that play of light. It's the play of color, and uh, oh, pardon me, the play of color. That's what opalescence stands for. Play oh. of color. Now the value on this is abs. This particular piece is very, very good, um, and you can see the estimated retail value, one hundred thirty-six dollars. Um, the um, for uh, the tonight only, our rock star price is going to be thirty-nine dollars plus shipping and handling. But you can love it or return it within thirty days. Again, this is a non. We believe in passing on the value to the consumer here. Uh, so meaning that you and you say it very well. We're vertically in. Integrated, which is, sounds confusing, but is actually really good that it's confusing because it saves you a lot of money whenever you purchase things. Um, vertically integrated, what does that mean? It sounds very corporate talk. Yeah, Vertic corporate, corporate. Yeah. When, when right you do word. your annual report to your shareholders, uh -huh. you say we're vertically integrated, and it's uh, it, and it is an impressive thing because what does it mean? It means that you cut off all the middlemen out of your chain of supply. You are working directly with the source. So in our case, we have men on the ground in a number of places around the world. They buy the stones directly from the miners or from the mining companies, and then they bring it to us in our factory. In our factory, we have everything under one roof, whether it's the gem cutting, or it's the designing, or the model making, or the casting, or the jewelry making, or the setting. Everything is done in one place. And uh, the final polishing, of course. Now here, I believe, is another opal that's really, really, really caught my eye. So we just looked at kind of what I would call, you know, what I'd expect of an Ethiopian opal. What we just looked at was very, if, if you want to be right in line with everybody else's fashion, that's exactly what I expect. This one has a little more personality. This is going to be G1374. Now what can you tell me you see right away out of this, Irit, out of this opal? Well, I, I see the play of color. It is definitely, uh, you see, uh, a dark space, a kind of brownish background, but you got the beautiful green and some red and slight 
Uh, as I'm moving it around, you can see the flashes of red, the green, the bluish, the purplish. Um, this particular stone was, uh, was treated and that's how we got that background uh, to it. Um, it's a treatment that is irrevocable. It's here to stay. Now look at these two side by side. See what I what I said a moment ago, Reed, was this is the the what I would call the the normal um, opal that you'd expect to see, kind of the white body, lots of play of color. Now if you look at this, it's something completely different. What we call the black, what we are calling Ethiopian black opal. Look at the play of color out of this. Now I once heard from you that red is what you're looking for. The more red, the more the more desirable it mm. is. Now I I don't know about you, Reed, but but I see a whole lot of red in there. I see, I'm seeing, especially depending right. on which angle, look at this, whenever we look kind of down And you can see some blue, middle. which is phenomenal. Yes, and then we kind of go to the side, look at this, and it's yeah. more green and yellow, and then there's a little bit of red as we come around the sides. How is that possible that, you know, whenever we look at it from different angles and different degrees of angles, that the light can change so much? Well, uh, we explained that uh, opal themselves are silicates. And if you can imagine layers of, of or little beads of glass, mm -hmm. all in one, uh, all in one area. And water gets trapped between those little beads or the slices of the silicate. What will happen to the water, to the light when it hits the water and the glass? It's going to reflect. It's going to reflect. It breaks into the prisms, mm. into the colors, into the into the different wavelengths as what we call the prism of colors. Well, that I so, mean, and that and you can see the prisms like within this, even as it just rotates. Look at it: green, blue, red, with that black kind of dent, like center thing. This is a really unique piece. This piece allows you to have a whole lot of individuality, I believe. Um, um, and Ari, I want to show one more quick, uh, I want to show, I'm sorry, pardon me, I want to show a couple different variations on, on these opals, and then I want to end with one that I know is going to grab your attention. Oh, please do. I'm let's positive. Go. All right, so let's take a look at something else. We've seen the white opal. We've seen like We've a black seen opal. White opal. And once again, if you see anything that is in here, we can we'll continue to show these these trays of our gems throughout this evening. If you see anything you like, feel free to call us up. We'll be happy to bring it out. You can obviously call and ask any questions you'd like. There you are. You're kind of looking at Ethiopia there. You don't you wouldn't know it by looking at that, Reed, but you're looking at Australia and Africa right there. That's uh, that's Australia and Africa one through six. Okay, let's take a look at a different style opal. What do you say we take a look at a, uh, at a fire opal? Let's look at fire opal, let's look at Ethiopian green, uh, blue opal. Oh, you know what, I, I think you're, let's take a look at Ethiopian blue opal. I've got a, here, let's see, here's an example that's really, oh, nope, that's not an, here we go. This one's really grabbing my attention right away. And, and actually all of these come from the same location, so we can put them all in one. Absolutely. So here we go. This is an Ethiopian blue opal. Just right. so you can compare it back to that black opal. And I'll even show. Here we go. Let's let's really get crazy here. Let, I'm going to show. Oh, oh, I'm going to show our white opal here beside it. This is the white. We'll put it over here. We'll put him. I'm actually going to put him right here. I know we're going to blue, but just so that we can keep him in order. We know we have our white opal here. And then we've got our Ethiopian black opal here. And then let's take a look at this new Ethiopian blue opal, which is G1338. If you're calling up right now to ask about this one, uh, estimated retail value of this Ethiopian blue opal, uh, $112. Um, the club price, normally what we offer you the price for seven days a week uh, here at the Prestige Jewelry Club is $49. Tonight for the next uh, for the next two, uh, hour and a half, uh, you can get this for $32. This is a 1.4 minimum carat, seven, nine by seven millimeter oval sea green opal. I do have a few of these, so this would be a great opportunity for you to be able to make like, say an opal bracelet. Now, what, what would you think? I mean, you could really make something truly unique. You could make something unique. And, and you know, it's time for us to discuss why do we, why do we dyed? Mm -hmm. Why do we treat the awful? Why don't I go ahead and bring out another Because example. we can bring a wonderful color out of it and uh, we can bring the play of uh, the play of colors uh, where if we didn't do that you wouldn't have such an exciting stone and this is really for the wannabe designer for the one who wants uh, the one who wants to create her own jewelry uh, perhaps sell it even on Etsy as we all know people do <laughs> well at these at these prices you really have nothing to lose opal is such a hot thing that even if you it's such a hot item that if you made your own uh, jewelry with it I mean this is a perfect opportunity we have all the things you can even customize 
and do your own settings from our website at pjctv.com, or you can call us up. Obviously, we'll help you find a pr an appropriate setting uh, to work for you. But I, I've kind of lined up in the background here the, the, the different variations of what you know our Opal um, is going to be, and you still you can see the white, the black, and the uh, and the fire opal in the back. I believe that's a Fanta, a Fanta opal, um, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But this is again, this is a oval sea green opal. And Uri, tell us about dyeing. Uh, dyeing is is immer immerse immersing the opal in in a particular dye and since the opal is uh, is not a mineral it doesn't have a crystal uh, structure it's amorphous uh, it can absorb because as 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 is the opal has about 40 percent of it is water so you're add uh, some dye to that water and it permeates the stone. It is completely clear, so it doesn't change the, uh, it doesn't make it into an opaque stone. It just adds this element of color and then you have the play of color coming off that. So all you did was really change the, the color of the water within the stone. Hmm. That's I mean, that's really interesting to think about such a chemical problem because you'll notice within, no matter what the color is, that this one's this, this beautiful kind of deep blue, very sea blue. It makes me think of sea turtles. I can't really think why, but it does. <laughs> um, but it, it's got this beautiful blue color to it, but you see still all the plays of color. Now this one has more green to it, um, and you can definitely see all the different, you know, no matter how we dye it, it seems like it's always continuing with the same. Now let's take a look. Um, I'm going to bring up here just so you can see the uh, a different version of the same kind of diet opal. This is G1356. Now uh, this is you can see all of a sudden totally different feel, totally different look. This is a Fanta opal. So you can see here we have all the plays of color and light still, or plays of color within it. Um, and it's, you see all the green and there's this one has a lot of prominent yellow that goes along with it and then just some hints of red right around the outsides. Yeah, this is what's exciting about opals, is that even when you give it a background color to the water within the opal, you still have a phenomenal play of color, and sometimes it works with the color that you uh, dyed it, and sometimes it works uh, with contrasting colors. So it's exciting when uh, when an, uh, an orange one, when a fire opal, uh, is actually contrasting it with some green flashes and yellow flashes and uh, bluish flashes. Absolutely, and this is again the cabochon cut, right? So this would be great in, I mean, you could make a whole set of things. You could get a matching set of opals that could be this, the Fanta opals for earrings. You could get a blue opal bracelet, get right. a black opal ring, and now you've got the whole gamut of color, and everyone's gonna say, I've seen those I've seen those before, those stones, but not quite this way. And not only do you have one variation, you have three variations. Right, and to, to that point, we have a few lots here that have four stones. And four stones is really something to reckon with because you can design a few things with it. You Absolutely. can design one bracelet with all these four stones. You can design a ring with the four stones that will look like a clover with with a small diamond in between. Oh, that would be fantastic. If you, you could say, put like a little, make a little design a out of that. You can create a clover right here. Oh, now that would be a fantastic gift. Like you can see, like you could do, this is G1358. So again, Arit, you mentioned that this is a lot that comes with four opals within it. That is absolutely certain. And if you notice, they're all matching. So what wouldn't be, uh, it would be just delightful if you had your four clover, you'll have the, uh, the last one over here, the north side of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can have a diamond in between. In the center, you can have a diamond in between each one of them. And you could get settings to do that anywhere, including we can we have very similar things that you could find online at pjctv.com. Correct. Uh, and you can make, and this is what's beautiful about loose gemstones, especially at the prices we are offering them. Not only are you saving so much money on a high quality product, um, up to 75% off, but this allows oh, you to make it delightful. to you, to suit you. You know, you, Reed, you could design something that would be totally different than anything else that you know I would design or my sister would design or my wife would design like completely your own person like it is you can be whomever you want to be with whenever you buy loose colored gemstones 
Um, so Ari, we've been kind of looking at, uh, so we took a brief look at Australia with some amazing uh, yellow diamonds. I'm just gonna bring one back out here just so for a quick refresher, you can just see our beautiful yellow diamonds. Now those again for Australia. And remind me what the mining district was. Or you said Argyle. Argyle, Argyle Mine. Mines. Um, in Australia, and you can see just like white diamonds, all this beauty. Um, and then we took a look at a little more variations on opals. I do have to say, one I still find this particular opal extremely unique. Um, this is black opal. Um, and again, you can call us up and we'd be happy to show that again. Look at that flash of red. It's just absolutely such a unique piece. Now, Arit, whenever we come back, we're gonna really move through a lot more gems. We're gonna be looking at a lot different, different styles, cuts, and uh, different I mean, clarity all around the board uh, and uh, still continue to move across the world. Do we have uh, a little time? I'd like to finish with Ethiopia because we have another beautiful blue. Oh, don't worry. Blue oh, don't worry, Yuri. I've got one. Whenever we come back, we're going to take just a quick one minute break. Whenever we come right back, I've got an opal from Ethiopia that you are just going to absolutely fall in love with. And I don't even Can't think we'll wait. be able to sell it because let's you'll just run out the door with it. Let's, <laughs> let's wait for it. All right. We'll be back in one minute. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Prestige Jewelry Club. Why are our prices so low? Well, Let's look at how many hands does a typical piece of jewelry change before you get to wear it. Most traditional jewelry retailers, whether brick and mortar store or a competing TV shopping network, fall in this category in how they source their jewelry. Someone mines it and sells it to someone who processes the rough into a cut and polished gemstone, including any treatments that may be required to enhance the beauty of the gemstone. This is most likely done in Asia, and then sells his production to someone who is you. And also you get the first picks for being a member. In the end, you win big time. www.pjctv.com Still more to come on the Prestige Jewelry Club, live from Manhattan's Diamond District. When I was a young man, well, that's just the way it was. Where I was from, you got married and you had a family. And nobody had any money. My price range was nowhere near a, what well, was between a cigar band and a Cracker Jack box. Three kids and 30 years later, I thought I should get her what she deserved. But I wanted to get her when we were first married. And the more I see it on her, <laughs> the more I see the tolerant young lady that I married.
Hello and welcome back to the Prestige Jewelry Club. My name is Steve. I'm here with Arit. We are taking a look at the gems of the world we have to offer here at the Prestige Jewelry Club. And now this is just a, a small selection of what we have here. We are limited by literally the amount of stones we can stack on a table tonight. Um, we are moving through Africa and taking a look at, we were just looking at some, uh, some beautiful dyed opals. Let's take a look now at an Ethiopian opal that I think you are just absolutely going to be blown away by. Um, look at this. Tell me a little bit about what you noticed right away, Reed, about this particular opal. It's, it's incredible, bold, full of life, broad uh, flashes. And if you see, they are everywhere in the stone. There are no dead zones. Uh, the one thing you always measure in opal is, does it have any dead zones? And does it have any crazing? Crazing means a little tiny fissures of dryness. This stone is absolutely perfect. Um, and I would use the, uh, uh, the terminology that the GIA use, it's flawless. <laughs> <laughs> this is truly a collector's it's flawless. item. It's <laughs> This is a collector's item. Let me put it on our on our, on our uh, turntable here so you can really see it hit the light as it hits many different angles. But you can see right there, green, red is everywhere, blue, light blue. This uh, this is truly a collector's item. It is a, a beautiful, beautiful piece um, that I, I mean, I could just see being in a family for generations. What, I mean, this is just something I don't think you see many specimens like this, right, Ari? This is absolutely marvelous and beautiful. I, I, I'm of the belief that everything should be worn. Beautiful stones are not made to be put in the safe. Oh, absolutely. They, they should be worn, and they should be worn with the, the incredible outfits, and you should be outrageous with your jewelry, because that's what it's all about. It's, it's enjoy it, celebrate it. It is a, it's a natural, I mean, it's a natural element. I totally sympathize with what you're saying. I mean, it is a beautiful thing to find a place in someone's house, or someone's heart, um, more than, I mean, and I think that's something that you, with this piece, truly, you can represent, like, you know, more, you, this is a great, this would be a gift beyond, um, beyond just the value of the gift, which again, you can see here is $8,984 for the next hour um, on this show, uh, whereas the estimated retail value is $31,590, and that's what you pay anywhere else, they read. If you're walking up and down Fifth Avenue here in Manhattan. Good luck finding it. Yeah, first of all, good luck <laughs> finding this particular gem. No, and even that size. It's just, it's rare because you have to consider what it comes from. It comes from a rock and you find a very thin layer of opal in that rock. And to be able to carve out of that a stone as large as that, and we're talking about 33 by 22, uh, and I'm not even sure what the height, it looks at least 12, no, it's a way more. It's probably 15, 16 millimeter height. You wanna measure? We can measure it if you uh, like. We could, um, yeah. I'll just do the quick oh, way. Great. And that is uh, 14. I was very close. Yeah, I go. said 15. You said 14. 14. Or, was it, you measure like the pear shaped side of it there? Let me just kind of, or the length. That we have. We have the. Uh, oh, you're measuring the height I'm of it. I'm measuring the height, the depth. Absolutely. Which is quite, quite unique. Yeah, and you can see there, if we go up to the number, you and can see And to be able to get a stone like that from the rock, the sedimentary rock mm -hmm. that you find opal, this is this is a, close to a miracle. Absolutely, look at that. You can see right there, that's no lie. That is a rock. That is a rock of an opal. It is just absolutely beautiful. And, and unique. Yep. It really is unique. Absolutely. So let's take a look at a different and type of... And just imagine, if you dress this wonderful stone and we take the uh, fire opal that we had and we put some in the top and as a clover and then diamonds right in the center of it, you have the most exquisite piece of jewelry. Absolutely. Now, Irene, I'm sorry while you Can we move on to Absolutely. a Absolutely. We're looking at this beautiful Ethiopian opal. Um, call us for the next hour, and this one could be yours. It is truly an heirloom piece, in my opinion. Let's take a look at a different type of stone completely. We're moving into Kenya now, so we're still oh, hanging out here wow. in Africa, um, but in a completely different country, completely different type of stone. Just slightly south of Ethiopia. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Water's you take a trip in the Nile, take your <laughs> rowboat down the Nile, and from Ethiopia, oh, you're very funny, that's how we got it. It was a vacation. We you got know, it. Down Kenya. There in, uh, Ethiopia, That's right. Jumped in a little boat, rode my way down here, got us a piece of sabre from Kenya. <laughs> a very, I mean, that's that's a very good story of. Uh this piece here. Now tell us a little bit about this This overall. Well, this stone's extremely unique. I, 
The only location we know of is the Tsavo Park in Kenya, which is actually north of Tanzania, another country that we're going to visit very soon, uh, north of Kilimanjaro. And uh, it, it is amazing how much concentration we have in incredible stones right in that, probably no more than 500 uh, kilometers, right? It, it's a very small part of the world. And, we got a concentration of incredible, close to 300 different species of stones. Absolutely. Now I have quite a few savorites I want to move right through here. Now this is a pear-shaped savorite. Um, if you're calling it today, now these again, say that one more time. What you said right there at the beginning, Yuri, about where you can find it. It's in Savo Park in in Kenya. And absolutely, and that that is it, right? Like you can't. This you, is it. This is you're this not going to go it. and find this at a. At we a, at have a, it, we discovered. Uh, Savorite in 1967. Mm -hmm. uh, same year we discovered some other stone, the Tanzanite. Uh, and unfortunately, we haven't been able to locate another location around the world with such incredible, with any green uh, garnet. This is green garnet. Now, so we're looking at the pear shape. Oh yes, garnet. I want you to tell me more about garnet, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. While you continue telling us about Savorite, I'm gonna keep showing a few more products here, Reed, if you don't mind. Well, the same the same element that are uh, creating the color in our, in our uh, uh, emerald, uh, giving us the same uh, combination in Savorite. Uh, I've got it, I've got Savorite. it. Call on me, Reed, call on me, I've I'm got it. I'm calling on you, what did you say? It is chromium. And what else? What a, uh, vanadium. Vanadium. Yes, gonna, there got we go. It. Just you get a little the first bit, just prize. a little bit of help, you know, just a little help from Marie, but I'm learning. You are learning. And and it's fun to learn because these are these are things that make a difference. When you have more chromium, the color is, is saturated and lively and and, and has uh, almost red flashes in it. Yeah, you know, what I'm really noticing, Reed, and this is again, the one we're looking at right now is 1280, uh, 1.22 carats, six by five millimeters. So it's a very petite stone. Now I'm noticing a lot of these, because I'm gonna bring out and rotate, and here's another version of our Savorite. And I'm noticing just the saturation of color. So tell me about garnets, because garnets are special with the way they refract right, light, correct? Uh, well, they're singly refractive, so uh, exactly. they're similar to diamond in the sense that the one light goes into the stone and the same light will go out, mm. and so the color stays homogeneous when when you're looking through the stone. And as opposed to the one we were just looking at, this one now, 1270, is a 1 1.3 carat, 8 by 6 millimeter oval. I, I'm partial to the, the kind of more circular cuts in Savorite, like the rounded. I love all the facets. Let me show the table here so you can really see, like the, this one especially has just a lot of green to show off. Um, it, you can see just the, the clarity. And that's again because you're not seeing, so as I understand it, on a garnet, you should see one color, right? There shouldn't be a you whole be bunch of different one versions it's of green. It's not going to vary. It's going to be very classic. It's going to be very regal, very elegant. Something and like not like a, you know, if I look at an amethyst, which we're going to get in just a minute, I see different tones of violet, and I see different, some subtle hits That's of blue. And typically with a garnet, you're not going to see things like that, correct? You're not going to see zoning. This okay. is called zoning. Within one stone, you see different shade, mm. different shade of the color. That that is typical to quartz. That is typical even to sapphires. That is typical to quite a number of stones. But you won't find it in a tavrite. The tavrite is going to be completely homogeneous. It will be the color will be the same throughout the stone. Well, you know, speaking of uh, stones that only come from one area in the world, now this is a very, very, very popular stone. Um, we're going to move across to Nigeria, and let's take a look at uh, some other loose gems. Um, now tell me a little bit about this, Iri. This is a sapphire that comes from Nigeria, oh. mm -hmm. and what is uh, absolutely astounding about it is that two years ago, we didn't know it existed. It, it is brand new to the market, and, uh, and what we are excited about is that the color is so wonderful. It, it is the color of, of Burmese ruby, uh, sapphire, the Kashmira Look at the blue sapphires. Right there. Look at that uh, blue. So the, the blue is throughout the stone. Uh, the, the blue is, is, uh, is one shade usually. It's not two shade. It's not zoned material. Uh, it's relatively clean. It has no cracks in it. Uh, we're delighted with this find of fine sapphires from Nigeria. 
Now, Irit, we are blessed with many different versions and many different cuts of this blue sapphire over here. Uh, we have quite a few cushions. I'm seeing some rounds. I'm just going to continue as we keep learning a little bit about blue sapphire from you. I'm going to continue to show a few more different cuts of it, um, if you don't mind. And now we're going to take right. a look at a pear shape here. And you can see again, I, I'm a big fan of pear shapes. I love pear shapes. I, but the, you know, one of the things you have to remember that uh, the lapidary, the cutter, he's not cutting because you gave him an order for 12 pear shapes and mm -hmm. uh, and five rounds. Um, the uh, the beautiful cuts come because of the rough itself. The rough is dictating to the lapidary, to the cutter, how am I going to get the best weight? Weight is always an issue because everything is measured by the price by per carat, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to get the most weight, we call it the yield, and you want to get the best color throughout the stone. And what would give it the most liveliness? And remember that in many stones, you have to give the consideration that the color is not the same in all direction of the rub. Absolutely. That it is sense. not the same. So you have to take that into consideration. So he's cutting it, the, he's cutting this incredibly beautiful sapphire from Nigeria into a shape or another because the rough is dictating it. Now I've shown three different versions of this uh, of this Nigerian sapphire here. We just take a look at the take, uh, took a look at this pear shape, which I think exhibited more blue color than uh, than I'm used to seeing from you know stones like this. This one especially, I thought not only was the pear shape very nice, but you could just see the saturation of color within this. Uh, I mean, look at the blue. Look at that. I think it's just around. And look at the cleanliness. Mm -hmm. This this crystal is so clear. Absolutely, and no. and that's unusual because you take uh, you take uh, sapphires from Kashmir and you take uh, sapphires from Sri Lanka and you have a lot of inclusions within it. You have what we call silk. Is there something I could use? Could Oh, I'm just wondering, I'm taking a look at our world gems here, and I'm wondering if we have any other regional sapphires. We can kind of compare, contrast here. Show something, because uh, we had the Nigerian ones here, and I'm just wondering if there's any. I mean, look at the blue here. Is it just pops? No, I don't think we do uh, have any right. others. It's, it's a pity. Um, this is beautiful enough. There's no need that we need any other sapphires. But you it's know, like this I, is, I could take you a completely different direction. What? Kyanite. Kyanite? Bring it out here, yeah. Reed. It's Let's blue, and particularly this particular blue is from Nepal. Nepal, okay, so we've jumped into Nepal. Asia now. We brought you back to Asia, and look at this kyanite. Absolutely, and you can see here the kyanite, um, which is right next to the uh, to the blue sapphire, um, which is coming up. The blue sapphire, we're still looking at here. Now this is the, uh, this is a, you can see already there's just a difference in quality of the stone right I'll away. I'll put a larger uh, crystal so we can oh, see. Of blue kyanite? Yeah, so we can see this was here. So here we have the larger uh, blue kyanite right now, um, which you just moved on to. We just brought this one out. Um, and you can see just a little, it's actually, on it, the, the comparison, it's like a deeper blue that I'm noticing right away in the sapphire. Now this is a different cut, um, but it is, I'm noticing kind of a deeper saturation. It's a cleaner blue. Mm -hmm. It's a much cleaner blue. It's not, uh, it, there is no modifiers here. Uh, I love this Nepalese uh, kyanite because it's it's uh, what I would call a pure blue. Mm. See? Absolutely. Look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, you can notice just a, a lot of differences right away between the blue sapphire. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this blue sapphire up from Nigeria. Now, this is, again is an African blue sapphire in my hand right here that we're looking at, and then we are looking at a Nep Nepalese Nepalese blue, blue kyanite. Blue, blue kyanite. kyanite. Blue kyanite, correct. Right, I'm right. putting it back so We're we gonna can move on. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but that's, so anything else you want to touch on uh, on uh, blue sapphire here? Or would you like to move somewhere else within Africa? Uh, I think we'll move to uh, to uh, amethyst. You want to go to amethyst? Wow. Yes. I'm a very big fan of amethyst. Um, if you take it now, our amethyst here is going to be all Moroccan amethyst, um, and I want to look at one that I'm a big fan. And we had the other last time I did a loose gem show, we had a massive, massive, beautiful rock of amethyst that we ended up uh, we ended up. Uh, selling that show, which I was just so excited about because it truly was um, uh, was a, a piece that should be that will be around for a long time in someone's family. So now let's take a look at this. This is a trillion cut uh, purple or a trillion cut 
amethyst. Um, and this amethyst is truly, truly a beautiful specimen. You can see just again the plays of color and you can remember how I mentioned a moment ago and now obviously Reed, you are very familiar but all of our viewers may not be but you can see right up here at the top a little bit of blue, see that? A little bit of light purple kind of running here on the edges and then right down in here it just kind of gets more saturated and deep. Now what did you call that? Zoning? Zoning. Yeah, this is exactly what it's called. Can you explain as I rotate it and the zoning changes, can you explain to me how that happens? Well, it takes a long time for a crystal to form, particularly for the huge crystal of quartz. Those We're talking about crystals that are sometimes 2 feet, 10 feet, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, even 15 feet crystals, huge crystals, and it takes time for them to form. So the conditions may change during that time. You may have uh, pressure, different difference in pressure, different in heat, different in neighboring crystal, different uh, neighboring minerals. So all of that comes into play when the crystal is formed, and you may not have a homogeneous color that goes throughout. Let what you, you will see, oh, you what you will see, and I just want to point out to it, you see that straight line that goes through the, ameth through the amethyst? It's the growth line of the quartz. The quartz grow in a hexagonal shape, the rough, the crystal of the rough. So you, what you see is a direction of the growth. Huh. Well, let's take out. A, I want to show a different look here, a different different type of cut. Now, this before I do this, the trillion cut here. This is G1029, 45 carats, the largest stone we've shown so far this uh, this show, um, and it is an estimated retail value 1,800. Um, Let me just mention yes, one more thing. I'd like to mention about the trillion. One more thing, that when you put it on your ring, mm -hmm. when you put it on your finger, from the top down. You are totally looking at homogeneous color. There is no zoning anymore. So no zoning. If you're do you see at, any zones right now as a ring? As of right now, if I look completely down within the stone, I see no more zoning. I see something. Let me see if I can right. find a way. What is important for the cutter is to make sure that when he cuts the stone, the show the stone will show through the table as one color. So let me see if I can find a way. I want to try and see if we can show that to the camera here. If I put it up against exactly just now a you white see background. only one color. And I apologize you don't see for my any fingers zoning. being in the way there. But yeah, so you just yep, I think I see exactly what you're saying and that kinda that articulates. It just looks like Yep, there we go. Just put and a little more light behind it. And that's the sign of a fantastic cutter. He understands his stones. I want to show the same thing. Now I do have another. I have another cut I want to show. Now this is again. Remember how much I like the pear cut. Let's take a look at a pear cut and see if we can see the same thing. Would it, it should exhibit the same way as a trillion cut? A, no, this is this is pear this, shape. Okay, pear. Oh, I meant for the trillion cut, but this should, this should show. Yeah, look at the difference right away with the type of cut. You can see. Just yet. Well, this one has wonderful, I think they're called Portuguese fasting, when they go almost in a swirl type ah. around the it, around the pavilion and also around the, the crown. You can see the facet going in a circular motion, it, almost like a fan. It truly is amazing because it feels like you look in there, it, it, it's, it's mesmerizing. It's like, uh, it's like looking in a kaleidoscope. It's beautiful. 83.6 carats. 83.6 carats. carats. Um, and you can see here, let's measure this, Eri, because that's, that's a stone that deserves that deserves to be to be measured. Would you like me to do it or you want to? Uh, sure, I could do it. We have two measurements already. We have the 33, which is the length, mm -hmm. by 25. Oh no, I just want to make sure we show because one of the things I believe in and we believe in truly here at the Prestige Jewelry Club is okay. being absolutely, uh, like being completely just a, honest just and minute. making sure, like doing, I want to make sure that we show everybody, you know, that we are truly believing. Let me just put it into position and there then I are. can turn it around. 31. Point fifty-three. Okay. Oops. Right. And then we want to measure the depth, the width. And you have to do it off the camera for a minute. And then, and then I am so <laughs> sorry. Oh no, it's very I'm hard right, to pull off. I'm right-handed, and I would have to show. It's very hard to demonstrate. Well, I you can't see it, it, but like it's right that. at twenty-four or twenty-five. Pardon me. Next time, let's try and find a little easier challenge. Here, <laughs> twenty-five. Point sixteen. You can't quite see it there, but it's twenty five point one six. All right. What I think is very interesting to know is actually the depth. And the depth is sixteen point seventy four. Sixteen point seventy four. This is not uh, a pair of uh, um, 
tweezers so it doesn't hold the stone very well and that's I don't want to chip the stone. No, absolutely. But what I would like to demonstrate that it's it's absolutely an incredible beautifully cut stone if the camera can focus on that would make an incredibly beautiful pendant if I could find the mm. nape of my neck. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. And when I was playing with it earlier, I would take something as crazy as a square square emerald and make a pendant out of these two stones together. Absolutely. Look at that. I mean, if you had that on, that is beyond a statement piece. That's a that's a uh, that's a that is true sta status that you're showing if you're show if you're wearing that. Just absolutely beautiful. And you can see the difference in cut and the different types of stone right there. Now we're going to get back to these emeralds in just a few minutes. Um, now I want to show one more um, of our uh, of our amethyst here. I, I'd like to mention one more thing. The location of this uh, amethyst mm -hmm. came from is Morocco. I don't believe that mine is still active. This is very, very special inventory that is uniquely Moroccan and to the best of my knowledge, mining had stopped around the 50s or the 60s. Mm. So we are extremely lucky to have this incredible look collection. It has a little bit of a brownish color at some edges that you might be able to discern, but not many. Um, but that's how you would distinguish the location. Remember, we say that every stone and every location gives us a little story behind it. It tells us where it's coming from. And when you look at that, you're able to see where the location is. I'm going to throw a word out here for you, Arid, on this next gem that I'm going to show. So one more amethyst. And what I would say about this right away is checkerboard. Is that something that you, you did think well. accurately describes this? You did very this? well. See, it's, very, it's a good day for me over here. Let's take yes. a look at this checkerboard cut amethyst. It's a little bit different style. We've seen a pear shape. We've seen a trillion cut. This is the checkerboard. This is more expensive to do. This is harder to do. Uh, but at the Prestige Jewelry Club here, we're still passing all the savings onto it. Normally, you wouldn't even, you'd get this size, 1.75 minimum carats of an oval blue, or oh, pardon me, of an oval amethyst. And it would be checker cut and you'd be paying around $158 but today for the next hour you can get this uh, checker cut amethyst checkerboard for, pardon me checkerboard um, it for reminds $39. us of the checkerboard where we play checkers Absolutely. and I'm putting it on my fingers for a reason because when we wear jewelry we don't have a white surface underneath it so the white surface was highlighting all of the zoning within the stone etc but when we wear it as a ring this is the natural way it looks yeah it's not gonna look light purplish this is the color that you're going to see Absolutely. so in some ways this white surface is not doing our stones a great justice I mean with this, the stones like these I do believe that the skin tone really operate and adds a lot to even it. even if we put it on this surface I think it will give better display of color not really I think fingers would do the best this is what it would look like if can you match that this is, this is gorgeous. And you see the vitreous. Uh, what is vitreous? Vitreous is the way the glass is, is, is uh, shining at us. And look, look at the vitreous of, uh, of quartz. Absolutely. Look how amethyst is, is, is showing us its color in the best way possible. There's one more I want to take a look at it right here. Um, just very quickly before we move on. Um, and it is this one here, it's going to be, uh, I believe this is a cushion cut. Cushioned cut. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, with Portuguese cut, so you have many, many facets that are somewhat swirling in the back. And what they create is almost an invisible line mm -hmm. of stones. I'm not sure we could show. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> the angle is a little too steep. Uh, but you can see a line moving throughout the stones when I move my hand. Absolutely. Now, and, briefly, and I just this want to touch is on what this it would look like when you wear it as a ring. Now, Reed, I want to just talk about the value of these one more time because we've been talking a lot about the absolute, you know, the the process of these stones and where they come mm -hmm. from and comparing mm -hmm. cuts and everything. But this stone is a cushion cut, um, and the value here is estimated retail value is two thousand four hundred and fifty-four dollars. Now, you will notice right away uh, that up there. Now, I want to explain what that means. That's what you. 
pay and walking down Fifth Avenue if you could find some of these stones. Most of these stones are one of a kind, and we only have one of them to offer to you. Now, the Rockstar price tonight, we are saving you, uh, we're going to give it to you for $599 plus shipping and handling. Now, you do have 30 days to return it if you don't love it, and uh, but trust me, if you get a piece of quality like this, the reason we give you those uh, the, that free return or that return policy so you can send it back in the 30 days is so that you feel welcomed. You can come and see that we truly are serving the consumer. We're passing the savings along to you. Whenever you get this, you will not be disappointed and you will not want to return it. So let's take a look at a different type of stone altogether and let's move across into Nigeria. We've been to Nigeria once whenever we looked at our blue sapphires one more time. Correct. But let's take a look at uh, some other Nigerian stones that have a little bit more, uh, shall we say, flair, a little more... Uh, they have a lot of fire in them. <laughs> <laughs> and these are actually uh, Fantaspresetite. Absolutely. So um, Fantaspresetite, well, Spresetite is, is really the, the stone and it's a garnet and uh, just like the Tzavarite, it's a garnet. And the garnet can come in a lot of different colors. And one of the colors that all of us are really excited are these fantastic, uh, we call it Fanta because it reminds us of the drink. But look at the liveliness. You know, garnet is so close to diamond when it comes to brilliancy. It's way up there in the scale, and so it gives you this uh, adamantine uh, brilliancy. W different than this, the quartz, for example, which is more like a glass uh, brilliancy. Um, and, and the flash of color is, is phenomenal. Just like the Tavarite, it's a single refractive stone, so the color is always homogenous. It's the same throughout the stone. Another thing to remember when we talk about garnet is that they're limited in size. They don't grow big. Garnet don't come in large sizes. Now this one I want to draw in particular, this is a cushion cut 9 by 8 millimeter and 4.63 carats of uh, Fanta Spessartite. Again, these are not enhanced, so these are, this is natural. These are natural They're stones. Very natural stones. Uh, price for this for this show only, uh, $621. But we look at the table there, Fanta Spessartite is always so fascinating to look at. It not, it's got the saturation of color, but it's got the complexity of, uh, you know, of, of the stone itself that I just find fascinating and I'm not, so whenever you see them in and like in person or on a, on a ring, they're just absolutely mind blowing. But look at this, like there's the clarity from one direction and then at the other side, the complexity and the beauty. Like I think that's truly fascinating about this particular stone. And I'm gonna, I'm continuing bringing out a different cuts here, Reed, because right. I'm realizing we have so many vast variations on cuts and sizes. I wanna be able to show you as many as I possibly can while we're on air here for the next hour. Um, and so if you see something that you want, feel free, call us up. You see there, tray number five. If you can see a cut or something you really want, different carat weight, Call us up, we'll be happy to show it for you or you know, talk you through it. But we have we have a carat size and cut to suit anyone um, here at the Prestige Jewelry Club. So let's take a look at a few more of these Fanta Spessor tights and why don't we give it just one more minute and then we're gonna move on to a different type of stone here. I will. Um, Spessartite is, is a stone that was actually discovered in Germany, um, probably in the 1800, mid-1800, and uh, for the longest time it was the only location that we knew of until they uh, came across it in Nigeria. And uh, it was an amazing discovery because uh, uh, the local Maasai called it uh, uh, Malaya, Malaya, and meaning other garnets. Uh, so the first cut, the first name for all of this, the garnets, was Malayan garnet, and uh, we slowly started giving it names that will depict uh, something similar, so that in our mind we would know what color it is. So you heard uh, Mandarin garnet, you heard uh, you heard Fanta garnet. Uh, they're all just incredible garnet. Um, as garnet come, they are included, meaning that other neighboring mineral got inside the, the formation of the crystal at the time of the birth of the crystal. And since crystal don't, don't transform overnight, they take time to grow. If you did any experiment as a, as a nine-year-old in fourth grade, you learn that it takes time for a crystal to grow. Well, I can tell you one thing that that, that, that sounds initially like a turn off. Um, if you were just listening to this and not being able to see the beautiful product shots of these, but these are fascinating. Like they There's truly are. They're, they're, they're a stone I was not super familiar with, um, you know, very long ago. But now whenever you look at them, they just have a complexity to them and just 
such an interesting look. Now I want to look at one more. Um, we're gonna, we have one more from Nigeria here, um, and then we have uh, one more from Tanzania that I want to take a look at. Just di two different types of stones, and then we're going to take another quick break. Uh, but while we're still in here in Africa, um, and we'll move on to Asia after this. So this is our last look for Africa. I want to take a look um, at this beautiful uh, Nigerian pear-shaped stone. Um, and you will notice right away that it is already totally different than what we're just looking at at the Fanta Specitite. This is a pear shape and the saturation is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and this is just a, a really interesting cut all around. Again, we have blue sapphires. Um, and I think we took a, we saw some blue sapphires, didn't we already we from did. Nigeria? We did. But now we just have a couple of different cuts. Pardon me, I was, I've grabbed from the wrong tray here, everyone. Yes, <laughs> we, we can move on and um, perhaps we can go to the other type of specotite. Let's go to sunset specotite. Okay, that sounds wonderful. And that's in tray six. No, tray six we have uh, from Tanzania. So we're going to tray six, which has got Mocha Zircon. Part about that, we had a, a little bit of mic difficulty here in the studio, but we're gonna take a look at a different type of stone. Now this commonly is confused. This is blue, this is, um, um, this is a Zircon. Um, now Zircon is commonly confused with diamond um, or cubic zirconia, and you could not be more wrong. Zircon's one of the oldest stones known to man. Uh, I believe it's 4.4 billion years old, correct? Um, and, and then this is all, the first thing you will notice about Zircon, which is one of the most amazing things to see, is that, look, I mean, just look, no matter how you look at it, it is absolutely sparkle crazy. That is, and that might be, that might be in my trademark phrase for the day. It's sparkle crazy. And the G1227 is the one we're taking a look at here. 7.40 carats, 12 by 8 millimeter oval zat raspberry zircon, which is a little bit different from a little bit more saturation than your mocha zircon, um, and obviously a different shade than your blue zircon, which I believe we have a whole tray of. We're we going to take a look at in just we a moment do. from Asia. But finishing up, these are from Tanzania. So again, our last African stones for the evening. Call us up if you've seen anything from Africa or the Pacific Islands. Uh, you feel free to call us back. We'd be happy to bring them back out here. You can see there our array and our collection of, uh, of, of, of uh, raspberry zircon. Um, they're just absolutely beautiful um, with their sparkle and their luster. Now let's talk just a quick moment. We have about one minute here, Reed, and I just kind of want to give a quick once over of a few different cuts of raspberry zircon here. So give me a little bit of information. I'll show off some cuts here. Right. Uh, if you could bring a round or a cushion, sh a square cushion shape, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, again, this is this is a fantastic stone because it is uh, it, it it's got a wonderful way it treats light. Uh, it, it breaks the light into components, and it doesn't break it into all the components like we see we saw in opal. But in this particular situation, it breaks it into three different directions. So in each direction, you will see slightly different color. One one side would be kind of dark pink, the other side would be reddish, and another side may even show as colorless or greenish. Um, you have to move the stone within the within the different directions. Uh, look through the girdle, look through the back, look through the front. Uh, but this is unique to the zircon, and similarly for tourmaline. Uh, the other wonderful thing that happens in zircon is that it's got a very strong double refraction. As a result, when you look through the stone and you look from the top to the bottom, you will see that the edge of the facets are doubled. Let's see if I can ar articulate that there. Hang on, grab my little white pad. Something just give us a little bit of a backdrop. And then you see we get right there, we look right you down the middle. You would have to see it under a microscope. I have a feeling, I don't know if our camera can... Oh, it's still worth the can, look. I mean, look can, at that. It's like it's on fire right there. It's beautiful. Look at the saturation of colors you have. It looks like, I mean, the difference, look at the, what's I fascinating I think the name me, is perfect, raspberry zircon. Yeah, it really is. It's very fruity, like you almost, like it's almost, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Look, look at the, the, the beautiful saturation of color right by the side, that bright light. I see some blue flashes, I see some purple, like a, like not quite even just purple, maybe some violet, like it's just popping out in there. It's really a fascinating, a little bit of yellow even. I mean, it's just fascinating how many colors can come out of this stone. So 
We've taken a look at some Raspberry Zircon, we've taken a look at Fanta Spessor Tite, Amethyst, we've essentially, we've covered a whole hemisphere, Reet, and I've uh, been this last hour. Almost. I think we may have to go back to it for a little bit. I'm very there. much looking forward to it. We have some <laughs> stones coming up within the next hour that I cannot wait to show against some beautiful African stones we have. To stick around, we have Madeira Citrine, we have Ethiopian Emerald, or pardon me, yes, we have Emeralds coming up. Um, we have, uh, I mean, everything, you know, we have Kunzite that we showed you just a little bit earlier. Truly, truly, just, we run the gamut of all the variations you could possibly have of stones and we represent our global community that we are bringing to you at up to 75% off and thank you again for joining us here we'll be back in just a couple of minutes on the prestige jewelry club still more to come on the prestige jewelry club You're watching the Prestige Jewelry Club, live from the heart of Manhattan. Welcome back to the Prestige Jewelry Club. My name is Steve. I'm here with wonderful guest, Yurit. Um, we are taking a look at gems of the world from our Loose Gem Collection. Uh, we so far have covered a whole half hemisphere. Is that, I'm not even tired yet. How about you, Yurit? There is a lot more to cover. We have some of the best stuff still coming up. Personally, I'm very excited to look at the citrines and emeralds. So let's jump right into it. And you can see coming right into the middle of your screen there on tray sevens, the next thing we're gonna be taking a look at all the way from Cambodia, Asia, we're gonna be taking a look at some blue zircons. Now, anyone just that has been joining us for the last minute or two, we've been already looking at raspberry zircons. So let's review just a couple of quick facts to read about zircon for anybody that is maybe just joining us. Well, to start with, it's doubly refractive, so it means that it has more than, uh, uh, you would be able to see the doubling of the facets of the back, of the edges of the back. So if you look through the table, you will look to the back, you will see a doubling of each one of the edge of the facets. That's something important. Why? Because you could, uh, if you had a white zircon in your hand and you had a diamond, you could immediately distinguish which one is a diamond, which one is a zircon. Makes absolutely sense. If you sense. knew how to look at it. It is amazing how many people and how many times zircon fools you for diamonds, like especially the white zircon. Now blue zircon here is a very popular stone and rightly so. You can look at the different levels of color. Um, and we're gonna take a look at this beautiful cushion cut from the side here. Um, and here, let me uh, see if I can show you the girdle so you can really see uh, effectively how much depth it has, because I think that's a unique thing about this particular cut. It's a six carat, eight millimeter cushion cut. Uh, estimated retail value, $1,920. Tonight, uh, for the next 45 minutes, you can get this for $468 plus shipping and handling. So I'm just gonna continue to show us some different opportunities of cuts. Right, and, and let me just remind everybody that because it's a zircon, it uh, it has different optical axes mm -hmm. in which the light breaks, and you may see in one direction dark blue and in another direction greenish blue, and in a third direction you may see colorless, uh, or you may see only two directions. Each stone is going to react a little differently with the, stone, with the light. Um, so why is it special? Let's choose another blue. Okay. Um, and you can see the blue topaz, and right next to it, I'll put the zircon. I, I prefer to put it on the hand for one reason, because I simulate the colors oh, absolutely. of what it will look like on your skin, except that I can't position <laughs> it in an angle. You know, it's a very difficult thing we have here at the Prestige Jewelry Club. It's gravity. Whenever we try and demo it, it really, you know, it, it really gets in the way. But right. it's a beautiful. Look at that. I mean, that does just fine. You can see totally the difference right there between the two different stones. Right. And so the zircon, you can see that there is a modifier uh, of green. And in the blue topaz, you really have just the blue. Absolutely. So there are more. Now, again, I, now I can see it here. I can, it's more on now, the range of teal than on deep blue. If you compare it to the blue, blue topaz. Yeah, blue exactly. topaz. But what is astounding about it is the price. This is a phenomenal price. Absolutely. And there, this is an incredible find. And what I always say about zircon in general um, is that this does not look 
like uh, an affordable gem. This looks like an expensive gem. It's something, no matter the size, I mean, look at that. If someone walked up, if you were out and you know you were at a party with friends, and you showed that off, that who would not just all of a sudden just be totally en engaged by that gem? Like you could see it spark from across the room. This is a stone with a very high refractive index, so therefore it reflects almost as high as a diamond. Absolutely, and you can even see from no matter no matter what the distance is of it, like let me show you the girl here, and I'm gonna show it to you in just a little bit wider shot. You can see even though it's farther away, the sparkle does not reduce. Do you see how it's still just like sheens and sparkles and just, it, it looks like it's on fire. It just, it, that, that beautiful blue zircon, even from here, you'd notice it from across the room. This particular one's a pear-shaped blue zircon, 11 by nine millimeter pear-shaped blue zircon, um, and it is uh, estimated reach Retail value $2,080, but you can get it from us today because we are vertically integrated and we believe in passing the savings along to the consumer. You can get it for this show alone at $507. That's an incredible price. You have a six and a half carat stone mm -hmm. at $507. Absolutely. This is do the math. I mean, a six and a <laughs> half carat stone. This is not. I mean, it's now. It's not overwhelming. Like, I mean, we have we have larger like statement pieces. This is a statement piece, not because of size, but because of reflectivity. Um, just because of the sheer. Now, if you want something truly more petite, so I showed you a cushion cut earlier that had a little bit more depth um, to it. You know, it had a little bit deeper deeper cut on it. This is going to, you know, um, let me see if I can just briefly uh, find the one I showed earlier so I can show them side by side again. This is, I believe, a square cut, um, and but you will notice right away that it doesn't have quite as much um, depth that went along with it. So you can see the girdle of the uh, cushion cut, but if you really want more of the petite size, oh, here we are. Yeah, right here, this is the cushion cut I showed earlier. You can see it has a very unique uh, girdle. Now this is what I would call a square cut, um, and it is a 3.42 carat, 7.5 by 7 millimeter That's square. That's a lively cut. stone. Very yeah, it is. Lively. But you know, look at the step, the steps on it. I mean, the step refers to step cut, correct? Correct. A now, straight line. Now we haven't seen many step cuts so far. So can you give me a little rundown of what the difference is between, say, and now a cushion cut is just well, a well. You can see in the cushion cut, cut, you have a lot of triangle a lot of triangles and that's the difference between a step cut which you would use in an emerald cut and uh, and the triangulation you would use in uh, in cushion cut in round cut in uh, per shape cut in uh, trillion cut uh, that's where you would use the different faceting it almost looks like a what is it one of those things that just kind of you know this is a typical emerald cut one of those things that just kind of almost it pulls you in completely, you know, like this this particular square cut, it just almost drags you completely in. This is actually an emerald cut. It's a square emerald cut. Oh, okay. Yeah. What and is the difference? The reason, how, do you, how would you tell a square versus a square If it was a square, emerald? it would have had four corners and mm. sharp corners. Okay. This is not a square. This is an emerald cut square. Okay. So it has the, the corners are shaped and faceted. Oh, I see what you're saying. So it's not, if we can see here, maybe I can show it on the girdle side of it here in the close-up, but you can see on the very on the very tight close-ups here, I'm actually gonna rotate it just around. You can see right at the very corner there, I believe this is what you're talking about, Arik, it has a little shape to it. It has a it. facet. It has a facet. Yep. It has a facet, and the facet is for a few purposes. Number one, to kind of give it a very formal shape. The number two is you need a space for the prongs. Absolutely. And yeah. if, you, if you have a point there, it's very difficult to put a prong on it. Now I want to show just one more time, this is the pear cut I believe we were showing earlier. I just want to verify and make sure it's the same number. But it is, this also is the pear cut we were showing earlier, just so you can completely see the array of the blue zircons. Now this is just a glimpse of the different styles of cuts and sizes we have available. Um, and you can see right here that they are all just beautiful and they want to just sparkle completely from any angle that you we, see. We're, we're lucky to have a very high refractive index. It gives us incredible brilliance. This Absolutely. Is what, this is what, and the price is just unheard of. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is these are truly, I mean, the, ref, the reflection of them is extremely unique and they are very vibrant. All right, so now we're into Asia. Um, should we take a look at a different type of stone? We, we already kind of glanced at the Nepalese um, kyanite. kyanite earlier. Why don't we take a look at some 
a stone that is known only as this stone. This color is almost the definition of it, at least to me. As soon as you see this, you correct. can't confuse it with another one. That's Pick us one true. out over there, Reed. Which one? Which one uh, tickles your fancy? Well, I will take the larger <laughs> stone. <laughs> that's a wrap. Always a good move. When in doubt. When in doubt. Whenever However, ladies ask my gentleman which stone do you want, have, I think the answer should always have be a the pair largest. pair here. And that pair would make wonderful, wonderful earrings. And I'm partial. Uh, I love peridot with, with pinks. Uh, it, it talks to me. I love peridot with uh, orange. Mm. It creates. But I never tried peridot with a blue. I wonder. I, it might peridot just work. It you might try just it with work with, uh, with a zircon. Uh, why am I showing all these possibilities? Because everybody can become a designer. See if we can, oh, look at the peridot besides the blue zircon. It is just um, remarkable. Like now the play, you can see the play of light in the blue zircon immediately, like no matter what. No, but the saturation and color of the peridot is just is astounding. Like, whereas it can just really have a true, true green look. Like I said, it is, it is a, a stone that is, whenever you see peridot, you know it is peridot. Uh, there is no mistaking of peridot. And this peridot is from Afghanistan. It has a slight yellowish modifier. Uh, the stones that we're looking at are, are absolutely uh, free of, uh, of any modifiers other than that. Uh, and you're right. Very make, clean stones. These would make fantastic earrings. This would make earrings. beautiful earrings. I mean, earrings. let me show you the table on these. These would make just fantastic earrings. Look at that. Like any direction, like from the front, from the side. And you could do any kind of, uh, any kind of design you'd want with these and you can obviously find any designs for earrings on pjctv.com or just call us at the call center 1-866-752-3636 we'd be happy to help you pair up you know pair up a great design now the price on these is also amazing it um, is look at the weight it's 5.25 for two stones that are matched Yes. Matched in shape, matched in cut, matched in color, and you are getting it for $273. And a smattering of diamonds or some other colored stones to go with it. You have beautiful earrings. Uh, you can hang them off gold chains. And oh, that have would them. be. Uh, there, there are so many possibilities. Well, you can have a crossover ring where uh, each stone is looking at the other in, in a crossover, kind of uh, slightly on an angle. But my favorite here would be to create almost shoulder gray, shoulder length uh, earrings with chains that have diamonds thrown in it and just, you know, have that incredible sexy <laughs> movement. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see them rotate here and they just catch all this light and are just so beautiful right away. Like, look at the, the beautiful green That is saturation. a phenomenal price. I mean, the, yeah, absolutely. $273 is what you can get this for for the next 45 minutes. And again, these are natural stones. These are not enhanced. These are what you would pay for them. Uh, or this is this is far better than what you would pay for them. You'd estimate a retail value of this be $420. Let's take a look at a different cut of peridot. You want to take a look at this round cut of peridot you pulled out, the circular cut? Beautiful, beautiful stone. Absolutely. Now let's take a look. Again, a total, a very different. Those are the cushion cut. Um, peridots, but now let's take a look at the round peridot here. Um, and you can see right here that it's 7.25 minimum carat um, with 12 millimeters round peridot. Now again, same color, different type of cut, lots of different plays of light and lots of different uh, kind of aesthetic overall. And you can see even here if I turn it into the wider camera, look at it there as it just sparkles and shows. You can see still the color saturation is still completely present through all of it, um, but it's just a really you unique see all stone. The, the faceting, the brilliant faceting, we call it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna get these uh, cushion cuts out so of here. So all of those so triangulation and those trapeze that we're talking about, those are called brilliant faceting. Because brilliant a brilliant faceting. diamond is, is faceted with a brilliant. Because, yes, absolutely, because of the, and that makes sense. So whenever they right. moved into cutting different things like peridot. So they're either very long, uh, uh, triangles or their trapeze shaped, mm. uh, but primarily you have the the corners that uh, the the sharp corners right. that will create the reflection of light Absolutely. to the abdomen. Well, that's I mean, and you can tell that the light is really maximized within the cut here. They're not wasting any reflection Certainly. or refraction yeah. of light. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I want to show one more type of cut here. Let's take a look at a pear shaped cut of the peridot. Um, so we we again. We have so many, this is just a limited, 
limited, uh, you know what I mean, uh, edition of our, our collection here that we are showing from our loose gems across the world here. But let's take, and, and just in the interest of showing all the different cuts, here's a pear-shaped peridot. Um, again, I'm so partial to pear shape. It has the femininity of the round of the round edge, but then it comes down still to a sleek point. This is more of a taper, um, you know. Then it just so it's or part, so it just is a soft, soft edge. Nothing too sharp. Sometimes pears can be very aggressive. I, I love directional stones because it tells you how to wear it. Mm -hmm. You know, a round is, is always attractive. There is no question about it. But when you have a directional stone, you know that it elongates the finger. It creates mm -hmm. graceful neck. Uh, it's just wonderful. It, it works well as a drop from an earring. Could, this would make you feel, this would make a lady that wants to appear taller, uh, taller by wearing these as earrings. Right. Absolutely. Your right. neck longer, make you look more sophisticated, more confident. It's, it's really got a great, I mean, pear shape. I and mean, that's why they're so interesting. They have the classic feel with a little bit of linear elegance to them. So, um, yeah, Irit, I'm very excited about Peridot. I really love Peridot. I want to go to Colombia, though. You want to go to Colombia? I want well, to go to Colombia. Do you want to go to Colombia? It's a green, but you know, from, from, from Afghanistan to Colombia, we've got to take a plane. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think we can take it with a paddle boat. Nope. <laughs> we, the, you're absolutely right about we'll that. Be, so why don't we uh, move on into we'll South America? We'll be on the ocean We'll for start days. right along with uh, one of my, one of the, the um, a very exciting stone. I've been looking at them all night over there by you, and I've been just waiting to get to South America so if we could speak about them. Let's right. take a look at some Colombian well, emeralds. Well, you know, primarily in Colombia, there are two areas where there is mining, and one produces very included stones with very rich chromium, very, mm. very dark, beautiful green, but they're included. And another area is creating stones that are huge in size, uh, incredible pegmatite dikes that allow huge crystals to grow. And those are a little paler with a lot of bluish modifier. So these are what uh, I'm gonna take uh, this stone, which I cannot read the number. And I used a lot another stone. Here, here's a possibility for a set which in some part of the world, I don't know if this can be seen, will we'll aim them down. Now, Reed, I know that you, like me, are a big fan of pear shapes, um, pear shaped cuts even. I'm gonna put this on, you know, I found that I really prefer the way emeralds look over black. So if I, if I can show these right here, we have two different types of pear-shaped emeralds, um, and then the ones are a pear. So again, remember how we were just talking about pear shapes, elongating fingers, Correct. drops yes. from earrings? Um, these would be ideal for that. These are a perfect, like, stunner set of earrings, I believe. And, and this would create an incredible set of a necklace, a pendant, and um, uh, can we see the stones? Yeah, we do. We have a beautiful shot of it. Uh, so this is a perfectly matched pair. Uh, would, even though we have a head between the two ears, it will still look identical. And uh, I, again, I would use a drop shape. I would use a drop shape for the two stones, uh, hang them off the ear, and then complement it with a necklace that will have this pear shape uh, as a center. Absolutely. And again, I want to talk about price. This is a great time now that we've moved into South America to talk about and especially we're looking at such top-notch stones. Let's take talk a little about estimated retail value Arit, and how we arrive to the price that is normally the club price and tonight we are offering you for a rock uh, rock star deal where you're going to get 75% off up to pardon me up to 75% off on these products and you'll notice the price right away. Estimated retail value $20,995. Arit, where did that come from? Cuz it's not a, it's not a random number. It's not a random, it's a number that we, we take from uh, a number of retailers. We do send our shoppers, our secret shoppers, to a lot of different retailers. We also canvas the, inter the internet and we find out what are similar items selling somewhere else. So we know exactly what is the market, what can the market bear? What do the retailers start with? 
Uh, and, and then we say, but this is not the price that we need to sell it at because we have the wonderful advantage of no middlemen. Absolutely. We didn't have to pay seven people along the road, 1% here to 5 to uh -huh. 10%. So our position in the market is, is much, much better than anybody else. And it's serving the consumer, meaning we are bringing it to you. We take that savings we accumulate across by cutting out on the middlemen and then give it directly to you. All you have to do is be a member of the Prestige Jewelry Club and that is free. You can call up the number on your screen, 1-800, or pardon me, 1-866-752-3636. Membership is free. We just need your phone number and your address, which is what we'd need anyway to send you these products. So now let's take a look at the larger pear shape that you pulled out here initially. Uh, I'm gonna put, just pull it over here and put it right down in front. Now this is a beauty. This is the last one. I wanna look at two more Colombian emeralds very quickly here, Arit, because we've got so many more great stones to get to. Uh, but this one is larger and it is truly unique and a beautiful stone, 31.82 carats. And the estimated retail value on this, $27,000 for one stone. Our rock star price for the next 45 minutes, you're able to get this for $6,593 plus shipping and handling. And always you can return things within 30 days if you don't love it. Correct. Right, Reed? So let's take a look. We see this rotating on this beautiful, beautiful pedestal and you can see the depth of the of the of the uh, the stone, what what do you what jumps out to you immediately? You read about this pear shape. The color, this is so uniquely Colombian. Uh, it's not a color that you will get from anywhere else. And uh, for the connoisseur, they can have the certainty that this will be recognized by other connoisseurs, by other people who are familiar with uh, locations and, uh, and colors of stones, uh, because they're so different. We would look at, uh, uh, at an emerald from, uh, from Brazil, or we would look at an emerald from, um, uh, from Zambia. The colors are so distinctly different. The clarity is so distinctly different. And, and that is, this is what the world of gem is all about. This is where the excitement is. Let's show one more emerald here because, and I want to look, because this, oh, actually I'm going to show it side by side here. So we have this pear shape, and then let's take a look at one of these, uh, one of these square cushion cut um, emeralds here. And it is truly a stone that, as soon as I saw it, this jumped is, out to me. This is amazing because this is <laughs> this is a uh, unique, I think, to say to say the least. <laughs> so looking at this cushion cut or a square cut, would you call it a square or a? Cushion this is an emerald ring? cut. An this emerald is an cut. Emerald oh, cut. that I mean, of course I should have guessed the emerald because it is a it is it got the we just learned about the, the now this is a perfect this, example this where you can see. This is a square emerald cut. Why? Because the overall shape is square. And then it's an emerald cut because it's got the faceting of an emerald emerald and, cut, and you which can see is step cut on top and step cut on the bottom. This and is truly a a rock. Let me look at. Let me show this in the wider camera just for a little a bit rock. of scale. Like this is a this stone is no joke. Like it is a. Uh, I'm going to put it up here against, and I know it's upside down, so you have to use a little bit of your imagination and like you're a little bit of your upside down reading. It is a. It's, it's almost an inch. It is a massive, massive stone, and you can see now. Read. Remember earlier we talked about the clarity of emeralds and how rare, like true clarity in emeralds are. Right. The, you could see the ruler. <laughs> That's right. We can see the ruler, right? You can see the yeah, ruler the behind it. You can, side, not even, it's not even blurry. Look at that. It. You can read it. That yeah, is absolutely yeah, remarkable yeah. in an emerald. At least in my experience, the ones I typically see, That's at least right. of this size, are never this clear. I think we're all focusing on the top of the ruler, but the bottom of the ruler was reflecting absolutely. right here. Absolutely. Yeah. You, it's yes. just it's got clarity, and yes. it's just absolutely beautiful piece. Now, estimate a retail value. This is truly. A collection piece, an heirloom piece. Now, I read. I know you prefer. Every, you think everything should be worn. This is something that if you wear, this is you know you are a, you are truly a monarch. You are of top notch. Well, like, all the more power to you. Yeah. Elizabeth Taylor saw it fit to wear a turban and put an emerald right in the middle of the turban. I don't see why we can't do that. Hey, I 100% you know, agree with you. Gems were born to be worn. Uh, you know, I, you know Arit, you've convinced me. I think I'm going to take this emerald home and I'm going to wear a turban and I'm going to bring it in Absolutely. next time and show it to you. It's $216,000, uh, right, right at $217,000 for the estimated retail value. But for the next 
10 minutes, you can get this for the rock star price of $52,887 plus shipping and handling. Normally, that means you let this next bit go by. Normally, you pay $81,364. We are really dedicated to bringing you the best deal, and we want you to just you know come be a part of the club. If this is something that you truly want, you will not be disappointed, but just in case you do, you always have 30 days to return it. So this is a risk-free investment for you to try and try out our uh, try out our, our try out our products and become a member of the club. Now you can always, obviously, anything that you wear or you're so proud of, maybe you have a big, large heirloom emerald piece, um, or maybe you have a small Colombian emerald all of your stuff, please tweet it to us. You can tweet us at PPJCTV or find us on Facebook backslash Prestige Jewelry Club. Now, Irit, while I love talking about these beautiful emeralds, and I mean, this one is just so amazing. I just feel like I don't even really want to put it down because it feels <laughs> it feels like as soon as I do, someone's going to whisk it away and I'm not going to see it again. You um, may not. But, but let's take a look at a different type of stone. Now, remember, this one is so impressive to me because it is so clear and it has so much clarity to it. Let's look at something that I would say is known for its clarity but still has an extreme saturation of color that's very, very different. Let's take a look at some citrines. Now, these these are Lovely. from Brazil. These are from Brazil, yes. So why don't you pick one there? Mo most citrines do come from Brazil, eh, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, well, I can be extravagant and pull oh, out. Oh, I want to be extravagant. Uh, bring I'll me the, pull out the bring biggest me the big stone that one. we get have. That, get, that, get that pear out here. I mean, now this um, one, I, I have a little trick. May I show a little trick? I know oh, you're going to give us do. a whole education list. Here, but now I, I want to show a little trick that I've seen with this citrine. Um, this, this one in particular. Um, is, is if we, once you get into the camera here, it does something very, very special visually that I just cannot get enough of. If I rotate it here, look at all the fire. Look how it just goes orange to clear to orange. It just looks like, it looks like it's containing flames in the gym. Earlier to, yesterday, I believe, I saw this stone for the first time and I just couldn't stop playing with it. It's just a little bit of a toy. It's just so fascinating. Look at how beautiful it is. And you can see all the facets and how they interact with the light and the gift of brilliancy throughout the stone. Uh, but remember that this is going to be against the skin. Absolutely. And when you put it against the skin, I don't know if I can tilt it that way without losing it, it is a stone. It's a big stone. It is a rock. It is beautiful. And it, yeah, look, 142.82 carats. Now, we also have this one. We went ahead and measured this one because it's so large. I wanted to make sure I can actually show it for you. And this is estimated retail value for $5,873 for the next 10 minutes, $1,432 a read. But here, let's take a look at this. You can actually see we measure that. And look, that's, that's me where I was noticing all the the play of light and color. Now, you, what happens whenever you show it to skin? Show it against skin tone, I read. I know that you're uh, something you want. Yeah, to... I just I just showed it. Actually, the viewers uh, had seen that. Um, the color is is totally homogenous once mm -hmm. you have it on the skin, and and a, a stone like that, obviously, uh, I I can't imagine wearing it as a ring. Though there might be uh, a woman or two who would like it as a ring, and I would not discount yeah, that this possibility. This would be an absolute statement piece of a room. A ring, like if you wore this as a ring, this is this is saying, "Hey, look at me, stand up and take notice," because I mean to make you notice this. This well, ring you may have to use a, a mounting that goes over two fingers, and I've seen those around. I yeah, <laughs> I mean this is something that would not be out of place. You know what I mean on it, it with the size and the cut and the beauty of it. Right, but I think the more appropriate look would be as a pendant. A pendant. As a pendant or as something mm -hmm. that hangs off your pearls. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it can hang off in the middle of the pearls. A lot of the large stones would lend themselves to work as components that will be added to a bead necklace. Whether the beads are pearls or the beads are made out of other stones, uh, it would look fantastic. Uh, but we have some wonderful wearable sizes in our citrine. Uh, that would make incredible, would make incredible rings. Yeah, I want to show again this. Now we have two checkerboard cuts, uh, both in the oval and in a more rectangular cut um, that is here. So it's again, it's now the rectangular cut, both of them being checkerboard cuts are going to have both this inclusion and both these like reflections. This is called a barrel, oh, barrel, barrel shape. This is a, you this. see, it looks just like a barrel. Yeah. Yes. Oh, happy day. Yeah, it's a checkerboard with a barrel shape. Now, the checkerboard cut 
you will notice like when we get our, we'll get our estimated retail value up and whenever you notice that normally you wouldn't you, checkerboard cuts are more expensive to do they're more difficult to do they are they show more artistry that goes along with them normally the it takes calculation a yeah. lapidary has to think that the jeweler the cutter has to think of how he has to play it ahead of time because otherwise he will end up with a half a facet on the end of the uh, on the edges of the stone so it's not a simple cut to execute anything to do with lapidary work requires calculation. Absolutely. And you can see right here we have this oval. This is 22.24 carats, 23 by 17 oval Madeira citrine gemstone. Um, the estimated retail value $890 and uh, $218 is what you can get it for if you call before this show is over, um, which we, I believe, um, pardon me, I think I said 10 minutes a few minutes ago, we actually have about half an hour left. So call up and you'll be able to get the rock star price of $218 plus shipping and handling. Now you mentioned these are both wearable so that, you know, the last one was a very large stone would be probably most at home in a pendant. You didn't recommend it. It could be also done with the yeah, two. Yeah, I think the, two the showy piece is definitely a pendant. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that, I mean, it is no doubt that it's a statement piece, but it's very more wearable within a pendant. Let's right, but these are very wearable as rings. Wearable uh, if we find two that are alike, they could be earrings. Uh, all of the these, I would, I would find them acceptable and desirable as rings. Absolutely, and you can notice. The, the different color the, or the clarity of it. You see right there, you can even see my tool, my, my, uh, my, um, behind it. You can see my tools behind well, the... The transparent stones. Absolutely. I mean, that's something that's just, you know, I always take note of and I always find fascinated about it because it's not, it's not like it's not saturated. It's not like it doesn't have color, but it also has clarity. It allows you it's to It's transparent. It's not yeah. opaque. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we I really like that. We measure things by you know. transparency and mm -hmm. opaqueness. Yeah. So the more cloudy it becomes with other inclusions it, it becomes opaque absolutely I mean these are just unique pieces and very wearable now we've been looking at the oval uh, gemstone and then we also have this barrel cut um, which is also a checkerboard Madeira citrine and uh, feel free to call us up if you see any of the cuts or gems that you like and you want to see more of we'd be happy to bring them out and we and would love to see too. what people have in their own absolutely possession. yeah you, you might have I know we've we've had a lot of people have a lot of interest in Madeira citrine lately I would love to hear more about what you might already have please call us up you know introduce yourself we'd love to hear more about it Oof. and then give us you know a, Shout on social media. You can find us on uh, Prestige Jewelry Club on Facebook or at PPJC TV on Twitter. Um, and then also you can follow us on Pinterest as we are going to, as we always. Um, as we always, you know, live pin our show so that you can follow any of the products that you see on tonight's show. You can see on Pinterest also. So. Membership, I haven't mentioned a little bit, is free. It's very easy to become a member. Just call 1-866-752-3636. I promise it's nothing scary. We just want you to call up and become, and like, become a, we want to share a community of cultivating interest in gemstones and fine jewelry. And that's really what we want you to become a part of. We want to hear your opinion, what you want to hear more about. Feel free to call us up and uh, very soon I'll call up and ask and read a question. I'm sure she would love to hear from you and love to help you pick something that's perfect for you. Irie, whenever we come right back, we're going to take a look at a few more loose colored gemstones, um, some of which are quite unique and quite interesting. And we're going to finish up our little world tour if, uh, if we can. How does that sound to you? It sounds fantastic. I, for me, everything is unique. <laughs> for me, everything is a world tour. Uh, you know, I, almost every every stone elicits certain memories, either making some jewelry to go with it, or, or going to a jeweler someplace in in uh, in India or in Italy, and uh, working with the jewelers to make the jewelry. Uh, so everything has a story, and everything is is really fascinating for me. So I'm always excited. I'm always excited to see stones. Well, what do you want to take a look at whenever we come back? Let's just give a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a hint, so people know what they can look forward to. Well, I would say that they will be seeing some blues, some incredible arrays of greens, and some delicious kind of reddish brownish <laughs> colors. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, so, I spot some tourmaline over there, right? Yes, you have. And uh, tourmaline, in These case you don't know, greens. is a very, very hot stone. So stick around. We'll be right back. And we'll take a look at all these great things on the Prestige Jewelry Club. Still more to come on the Prestige Jewelry Club. 
Join the PPJC TV on Facebook and Twitter at PPJC TV. See our one of a kind series on Pinterest and join us live weeknights from 6 to 9 on YouTube. Hello, welcome back to the Prestige Jewelry Club. We have just a little under half an hour left of our Loose World Gem Show. My name is Steve. I'm here with the Reed Cuff Coffee, who is uh, just obviously a, a plethora of information. It's such a pleasure every time we get to come on Thank air together, you. Reed. Um, it's been too long. I hope we could do it more frequently. So what are we taking a look at here? We've started all the way over in the Pacific Islands, gone through Asia, Africa. We've been in South America for a little bit. What do you want to look at next? I'd love to look at blue uh, topaz. That comes from Brazil. Let's take South a look at some America. Brazilian blue topaz. Which, right. uh, which one seems to be your favorite over there? Um, I see some amazing step I cuts. I see some amazing cut. I think uh, one of my favorite is this stone, which is a checkerboard cushion cut. Beautiful. A check Stone. I see. And you can see right away that topaz, it comes in a lot of different colors, doesn't it? It's, it's not, not, not... Well, topaz usually comes as a white stone out of the ground. Under certain conditions, uh, where they're exposed to uh, radioactive material nearby, let's say uranium or titanium or, or thorium or uh, some other radioactive, uh, radioactive uh, material, where they get decomposed, they are emitting gamma rays. And those gamma rays excite the electrons within the blue topaz and uh, within the white topaz, and then the white topaz turns into blue. And that is actually a permanent uh, transformation of a, of a gemstone. Huh, now that's fascinating. Now you notice also right here, this is a cushion, you said checkerboard cut. Now we've shown a few checkerboard cuts this evening. Can you explain to me just a little more what a, what a checkerboard cut is and for the people? Well, you know how you, when you play checkers, your, your board is completely square and you have uh, squares alternating with white and black squares, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine that the top of that stone is that square board of checkers and each one of them, instead of being black and white, is just a square. Uh, each one of the facets is a square. Now it takes incredible amount of calculation in order for the cutter to cut it so that it comes evenly on the edge of the stone, the girdle. It's really easy to, uh, to miscalculate and then you have a stone that is not uh, shaped correctly. Absolutely. I mean, and it's, it, it is, these cushion cuts are awfully fascinating because they just add to the, the amount of light refraction and uh, all the different types of, uh, um, and all the different types of light you can see and all the different types of light you can see within it. Um, and so the next one, I want to show a different, I'm going to be moving kind of quickly through these different types of cuts, okay? Please, let's do so that. So let's, I just, because we have so many different types of stones, we have a plethora of stones and okay. angles and, and types. So this is, this is an octagon cut. Octagon because it has eight corners and it's a rectangle. Generally, it's a rectangle, but it has eight corners. Now, it's estimated retail value, this 14 karat, uh, 16 by 12 London Blue Topaz gemstone is $875. And that's the rock star price for this show is $171. And I'll see you bringing out here another, this is I'm what, an oval, an oval cut. Oh, look at the oval cut there. Now you can see, obviously, right, and we're still looking at the octagon cut here. Our, um, but, oh, no, we have, we have the oval cut up here also. The estimated retail, or the uh, $171 is the uh, rock star price for this show only. And, um, and look, so, even within uh, the three stones that we have here, we have slightly varying colors. And one of the reason is that a topaz is a doubly refractive stone. So it may break the light slightly different in each and every stone. So some would appear a little greener and a little bluer, and some would appear a little darker blue, and some will appear a slightly lighter blue. I mean, I can see a definite difference between the, the light blue here and then these more steel blues here. Like, this is definitely, looks like a uh, different, I mean, just a, a different tone altogether here um, between the checkerboard cut and then these more steel cuts. Um, and I mean, I think they're fascinating and I think they're beautiful gems. And I, I mean, the fascinating, the great thing about having so many different cuts available here to look at is that we can show right here the difference in light refraction and light play of light and play of color that comes along with this. And if you look at the step cut um, here, look at the, the long linear flashes of light as if we just kind of tip it right like that. Right. Which is just those larger, uh, larger, um, what are the facets? Is that the, that's right? They're facets. Right? Yeah, just, These are facets. 
Absolutely. Every flat surface on a stone is called a facet. <laughs> that's what it is. See, that's just like, you know, they, they created their own terminology just to make it sound more, even cooler. Like it not only looks cool, but it sounds cool. It's a facet. It's a facet it's of not life. Just, it's, it's a side of life. It's a side. What is it? The backstone of the gem? No, 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 no. That is a facet. Well, in the backstone of the gem, it's a pavilion. It's a facet on the pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time I think I've got you with something, you just are right back there and you're like, nope, bring me right in, giving me more That's information. That's a pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're looking at a pavilion of the uh, of the octagonal shaped stone. Absolutely. And so, you can see that if you twirl it just a tiny bit, you can see those steps facets. Absolutely. I'm gonna have the to straight this. lines. It's going to be difficult for me to do. Yeah. It's great if you show it right on your skin because then we all get a beautiful uh, sense of what would it look like once you wear it. And it has a fantastic, uh, very deep glow. And you can see that definitely like within these, like the skin tone plays a huge difference. Right. We can see it on my skin versus your skin. I, I, I wonder if it will impart Absolutely. a little yellowishness. All right. Let me, let me transplant here. You have for very you. white skin. I have some yellow. In and it does, it, it plays very, just subtly differently on no matter what, on the right. different tones. At the same tones. time, it's a regal color, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, very regal. I would say, you know, very eloquent. Um, it's blue, but not, you know, not not in a cheap sort of blue, like, or sea, not even like sea blue, kind of like steel regal. Still. I don't know why, but it feels li like London, feels slightly urban to me. I'm not, <laughs> can't really say like why. But I, you know, it feels that way. Slightly urban. Slightly urban. I like that. So what else? What, so we're taking a look at um, our different worlds of well, gems we, here this we evening. We have beautiful cushion here. I just wanted to go over the few stones. Absolutely. Why don't we look at a few us. more cuts there? We have an oval. We have some more octagon shapes. We have uh, darker stones. I'd like to point that one. Where? Um, where's the other? Uh, the other cushion oh, cut? Oh, the other cushion cut. If we could put them one next to the other. I'll put the cushion cut. Just the first. to see the difference color of the color. Yeah. One is a Swiss blue and the other one is London that, that's blue. That's what I thought so. I thought this first might be a Swiss blue. And you can definitely see the difference within there. This is the Swiss blue we were looking at formerly. And this is the London blue topaz version of pretty much virtually the same. Very line. dark. Very similar. But you can, yeah, I mean, and look, you can see just the different tones. Still blue and saturated, more light and uh, um, um, brilliant. Um, and both, of course, obviously with the checkerboard top. That's, and that's why I chose those particularly too, because we can see then the difference in colors. That's fantastic. I, I mean, I love being able to compare the same stone of different cuts and different different colors just right next to each other. I think that they're just, it's, it's truly, a, you know, it's a great way to show how much personality and preference goes into loose gems. And that's the whole thing True. about our, war, our series True. of loose gems here. So these are truly something that you can find something that expresses the unique traits of your personality, set it in a way that's unique again to you, and all of a sudden now this piece becomes becomes a great part of who you are and how you express yourself. And it's very simple. Obviously, all the uh, you can find any setting um, for anything you would like on our website at pjctv.com or call us up and become a member, 1-866-752-3636. Um, now we'll be able to help you out becoming a member and show you anything you'd like to see. Well, why don't we take a look at another um, <clears throat> And another Brazilian, or actually, you know what? I want to look at those tourmalines. Can we bring over those tourmalines? We Here could. We... Uh, let me choose a few so we can uh, we can see the array of colors. Absolutely. This is called Paraíba. Mm -hmm. and so and... first of all, we've got out here. We've got the Paraíba tourmaline, which is in a pear shape, a pear shaped Paraíba tourmaline, and you can see right here the color. Now, Pariba originally referred to the mines in which they came from in Brazil, correct? And then now it's kind of more to become an association well, with the Well, the name color. came from the mine in, in Brazil, uh, but that mine seemed to be depleted. There haven't been any uh, new finds of stones for many years. And uh, the world uh, was very kind to the uh, stone searchers, and we found uh, fantastic uh, um, uh, stones in uh, in Mozambique. 
Absolutely. And so these are formerly, so while these, we were in South America, we're kind of taking a quick trip back to Africa for these Mozambique uh, tourmalines, Pariva tourmalines. Now this is the pear cut, 1.87 carats, 10 by 7 millimeter. An estimated retail value, and now tourmaline I mentioned right before we went to break, is a very, very popular stone. Estimated retail value, if you were going to buy this somewhere else, it would be $3,273. That would be on any, you know, online or brick and mortar store. Um, but we always offer you the best deals by cutting out all the middlemen, and today we're offering this for under $800. It's $799 for this pear shape Pariba tourmaline. Now, what is this other stone you've brought over here? Because I noticed a difference in color right away. Let me move it right up here. This is also a Pariba. Pariba can range in color from from kind of bluish green to greenish blue. Yeah, and, and you see here, bluish green. Bluish green. Greenish green blue. blue. Now that's and, amazing. And the, the richer it is with chromium, the more green you will see. Now, I'm very familiar with chromium. We've learned a lot about chromium over time. That's what colors emeralds and other, uh, other green. And now here it is interfering with our tourmaline, giving us <laughs> one of the best colors ever. And the major modifier in uh, tourmaline is actually copper. I believe that, like the buildings in New York. Right, just like the, the ancient buildings in New York where you see the interaction between copper and water and elements of the air, the oxidation. And it's a beautiful and thing to see. I mean, people aspire to have that. It is a very sought after thing, the, the, the patina, correct? It's patina. The patina, the copper. Antiquate. Mm -hmm. Antiquating, or? yeah, the, for the you know very large famous buildings that people pay a lot, a lot of money for. It. But you here, you won't even pay. You can have the same kind of color, same process, but you don't have to pay nearly the same price as you would have to pay to live in, say, like the Dakota. Uh, this is five thousand five dollars estimated retail value. Rock star price for this show only one thousand two hundred and twenty one dollars. And you can see that right away again, greenish blue, bluish green, both pariba, both. Paraiba. Para Para both Paraiba tourmalines. Um, so it's a great representation again of different cut and different color of the same stone. You have another one over there? Let's pull another pair. Paraibas para are so so hot right now. I'm going to put these on our uh, turntable so that we can come back to them. very sought after stone because uh, they're limited. They're, they're limited in supply. The um, I will pull out a lovely um, lovely pear shape. Another pear shape. Now this one is very petite. It's very petite yet it's saturated with color. And I'm again seeing you more bluish see green than greenish blue on the teal family I would say for this one specifically. Like I mean, this one is a beautiful piece. You can see it. You can, you can see the copper color coming through. Oh, it's amazing how the light reflects so much with the background that you can't even... Uh, yeah, that it, it just that it, it washes it out. It, it overexposes it completely. Out. Let me pull um, it. Put it on against your fingers and let's see what it will look like once you wear it. Let's take a look at that. Let me see if I can get that on there. Here we are. Let me bring this in here. Sorry, I got it on here now. Look at these, yeah, these are just gorgeous, this pear shape. Now, this one again, I said initially, like I'm seeing again greenish blue now that I put it on the skin tone. And again, I have very, very fair skin, uh, very light, but you can kind of see that pear shape. Um, why don't you come in here, Reed, and show the pear shape that you have I'll on. show the pear shape that, that you just had, and I'll show it against my skin. I, because my skin is slightly darker toned than yours, I think it will show differently. And it does. Look at that. And that's brilliant. That's really brilliant. You can see just the different, again, one's more minty. Oopsie. Um, and one's a little like softer, kind of more hints of blue. Right. Both are just absolutely beautiful. And the prices are fantastic for these products. For the Perry of a Tourmaline is just such a sought after stone. And it's not only uh, like hard to come by and hard to execute appropriately, you can get both the range of bluish green to greenish blue. Just another way you can customize along with the cut and setting for something for you. Let's take a look. I, I'm seeing some reds over there that I'm a little curious about. Uh, well, this is a stone that we haven't shown at all. Would you know that the blue topaz has a couple of sisters? One is white topaz, and the other one 
is called Imperial Topaz. Imperial Topaz. Imperial Topaz. I wasn't even gonna jump in there, Reed. I knew I wasn't. I knew I was gonna struggle with it. Yes, I, knew I, I was gonna struggle. That was not a test. That was just uh, <laughs> <laughs> pausing for the impact. dramatic effect. For Pause dramatic for dramatic effect. effect for Imperial and Topaz. So Imperial Topaz. That's right. Um, I remember the first time I ever saw it. Oops. Um, it was an amazing crystal. Most of them are very long. And you can see the uh, pink in one side, at the edges, and the peach color in the center. Very unique to Imperial Topaz. It definitely, I see more pink towards the edges of this. So like, let me show from the table. There we are. So uh, now I see what you're saying. You see? Pink you see towards the, the edges and pink. And peach, peach. throughout the stone. Absolutely. Peach and, color throughout the stone. And again, you can see all the facets and all the uh, all the, the like refractions of light. Now this is, again, this is a little bit more linear, but it has more of a checkerboard style cut on the back of it rather than like a step cut, um, which I'm not sure if you can see, which allow it to really have more reflections and more sparkle and more hot spots of light within it. If we show it even a little wider here, you can really see the saturation of color that comes along with this stone. Um, and, and again, as the estimated retail value for this is $8,602. The rock star price for the next uh, 10 minutes only, $2,796. Now we only have about four minutes left here, Reed. And I want to talk. Make sure we hit on everything you want to. All hit right. On. So, so bring wanted, out anything else. I wanted you want to me. mention that we have a few of the imperial topaz. This is a rare stone. It's an expensive stone. It's not something that um, is uh, easily found. And at that, we have fantastic price for it. It's well below the market. Price. Absolutely. The price on all of these, you will not be disappointed with. They will absolutely. Right. Would you like to see sunset spessartite? I, I you know. I believe sunset spessartite is. Something